Hello, my name is Host Eric, and I'm Host Talking with Famous People. I'm very excited to have a new famous person to, or she's not a new famous person, but she is a new type, typey, typey, or typey, the one being typed. So, uh, I'm not going to ask her, I haven't spoken with her before, and I'm not going to ask her anything, in, I mean, I'm not going to initiate any conversation right now, I'll just start and write with the questions. So, first question. Would you rather take a boat that provides you a scenic route, but takes an extra day onto the trip, but you have a nice cabin in the boat? Uh, or would you rather take an airplane and get there right away, assuming you really want to go to the destination? Um, what kind of destination would it be? It's... It's a... It's a vacation destination that you really want to go to. Your number one choice of vacation destination. Hmm. I would think... Hmm. So the scenic route, that'd be kind of nice, but if it's on a boat, I'm thinking what if a storm or something happens? Then when I think about planes, there's also risks for that, too. But you like to walk. But <laughs> I guess a plane, because I've been on a plane before. Okay. Um, if you have a choice of an outing this evening, not this evening, but tomorrow evening or whatever, and you have a choice of one other person, just you and one other person going out to dinner, you and two other people going out to dinner, or you and three other people going out to dinner, which do you choose? I would think one. Okay. That would be less. Do you, when you're evaluating other people, by as to whether or not you think, like, let's say you you meet somebody in your town, and you've not met this person before, and she's your own age, however old you are, and she's got similar hobbies and stuff. Talk me through your process by which you start evaluating how, if and how you want that relationship with that individual to um, go into a friendship or how much distance you want. Talk me through that process a little bit. Mm. Usually when I first meet people, it's kind of, usually kind of more quiet in a kind of way where I sort of observe how they are and see if I would get along with them, I guess. Usually I try to, like, crack jokes and stuff and try to break the ice and see if they're responsive or not. So do you... I know some people... Do you look for, uh... Do you look for a lot of... Do you, do you look for emotional payoff from, from your friendships? Do you expect them to provide you feelings, good feelings? Yeah, usually I would look for that more. Let's say you get dragged to a party you don't want to go to, and it's filled with, like, let's say, uh, if you like this kind of party, then I'll change it, but for the moment, the party is going to be full of, like, Yarbra frat boy guys and, and, like, people, girls who are, like, really ditzy and stuff, and and you're, you've been dragged there by your friend who agrees it's not that much fun but says it's important that we stay for at least two more hours because otherwise the host will be very offended. What do you think? Probably I would kind of quietly fade into the background and then climb out the window and then go somewhere else <laughs> <laughs> if I was ever in that situation. Climb out the they window. They won't notice. Okay. You're gonna just fade out the window. Okay. Hold on. So on that note, so you would you would choose that you would bail on your friend. Uh, if, they you didn't want, if I didn't want to, if I didn't want to go, then if they were my friend, they would understand. They dragged you really there in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm Other so, questions? Sorry, I I, I, like that. I appreciate you chiming in with a question. Thank you. Other questions? Anybody else have a question? What is your 
what is your main directive in life right now? Like, what are your main goals? Okay. What drives so you every day? Hmm. Well, because of my situation, um, I would probably have things different. But because the way it is, I'm sort of in a case where I have to do stuff that I don't necessarily <laughs> want to do, and I'm going into the medical field. But um, it's so I can move out and be independent and stuff. So then I can actually do what I really want, which is like art and write and not really have anyone else telling me what to do, really. So why did you, are you choosing the medical field just because you think you can make some money and to become independent, mm -hmm. or do you actually like the medical field? I do like biology and stuff, but part of it for me to make myself kind of like it more is that I'm helping people and it's something that's needed. Money isn't really necessarily important to me. If I wanted to make money, I would be doing different things. What kind of writing do you do? Fiction? Fiction, poetry. Usually I kind of combine, like, um, I like to draw and stuff. So I kind of like to combine, like, making cartoons and, like, ideas like that and trying to make comics. But I haven't necessarily finished anything yet. I have, like, a bunch of things in the process, but I haven't gone around to hey, completing it yet. Hey, just make sure that you remember, remind yourself the work's done. It's just not the project's not done, all right? So don't don't yeah. resent, don't kick yourself for not getting for not finishing shit. Just yeah, make, I used just, to do that. Yeah, keep it. Just think to yourself, it's just back burner. That's all. It's gonna be back burner for years. You might come back to it in years. I I have plenty of things. Come back to it years. Yeah, later. actually, before my problem was when I was back in high school. I would get worried about that, and now I have like all these different things that I could work on. So I'm not so worried now because eventually after I'm done with school, I'm going to get back into it or I'm going to work on it in between <laughs> notes and all that. So, yeah. Um, have you ever written any formal verse forms of poetry? Formal, like sonnets and stuff? Okay. I had to do that one time for a project. I have big pentameter, stuff like that. Mm, I don't think so. Usually it's free form. The only time I've done it was like a sonnet. That I had to do for class, which I did five minutes or no, I did it the morning of this project was due. Right. Got it. Got an A on it. <laughs> well, I would and recommend for anybody writing poetry to look into metered verse a little bit because it's a really interesting way to uh, evolve your writing is to try to cr do sound metered verse poems. It's good, good practice. It's like a skills thing. Just a just a tip. Go ahead, Yubi. Or Raven or whoever that was. You guys kind of sound the same, Yubi and Raven. Oh, no. I'm, I'm <laughs> I do. right now. I thought the same exact... As soon as I joined this meeting and I heard Raven talking, I was like, dude, that's fucking weird. Because he sounds kind of like me. You guys are the male <laughs> JC and Nandi. They sound the oh, same, God. too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead, whoever was talking. Raven, you got a question for her? Um... I don't know. She she kind of sounds a lot like uh, my sister as far as art is concerned. Uh, she sisters in a lot of drawing, but she she seems to. Uh, I, I guess what I'm trying to get around to is: Do you like to uh, do you like to bounce around ideas uh, when you do art, Kit Kats, or do you like do you kind of stay focused on one subject, like uh, something like that? Like one idea at a time, kind of thing. Uh, uh, more so, like uh, for for example, um, say for instance you're wor working on um, uh, just just a like a book. Like you, you had an idea to write a book, and uh, you set yourself a goal that you're going to get it done in a year. Uh, and let's just say it's a fantasy book, so you got like fantasy world in mind. Um, mm -hmm. So whenever you make the book, are you are you going to what's a good way to say? It? Are you going to bounce around a bunch of ideas and and try to just go from place to place and then and see if they all come together, or are you just going to work on one idea, like say for instance, um, uh, chivalry or uh, 
something kind of like Lord of the Rings? Or are you going to stay on just one idea and go with go with that through the whole story, or are you going going to play around with a bunch of ideas and and see if the story kind of cohesives that way? Usually, the way I work first with the stories, I balance from really it's super scattered with like a lot of a lot of things and it's usually messy and the way I kinda work is I have all these ideas laid out and I kinda try to condense it and then cut the things that aren't so necessary. I try to sort of put like an over like a main theme but it's kinda in the background. And usually just I'm more focused on all the little ideas and different things connecting and things that just like come to my interest. No, that's that that's very interesting. Um, that actually kind of brings me to the next question. Uh, un unless Yubi wants to cut me off, y you got anything, man? No, go ahead. Um, so to expand on that, uh, uh, this this kind of goes with the art, but this more so goes with sort of a life philosophy. Um, so the question is, when you uh. Hmm. The way you look at life, do you do you try to look at life in a more comforting manner, like your like your agenda per se, or like your goal in life is to find comfort, a place to call your home, whether you're with a person or not, or are you the type of person that will um, that will want to believe in something, and you'll want to become something greater than yourself, and and that's your that's your life goal, at least in the background, that that's like your back burner. Um, and you'll just go straight forward with that. Uh, uh, does does that happen in your art? Let alone, does that happen with yourself? Um, I think it would be the second one we were talking about. Like, I sort of have this feeling like I want to do something to change the world, but right now, from how I am and stuff, I kind of feel like I can't really make much change until I make myself better. So for now, I'm sort of following, like, I like things being, com I like to like have a comfortable place for myself for a while, but later I kind of want to try to do something greater for myself than just being comfortable. I'm not sure if that's clear or not. No, no, that, that, that works. Uh, it it, it, it's kind of more something, uh, I guess, like whether you're trying to find uh, pride for yourself, let alone uh, pride for others around you. But uh, yeah, it, it's like, uh, I, I guess another way to put it, uh, you said before you, you were kind of scattered when it came to your artistic bent. You, you seem to be thinking about a lot of things uh, one after the other uh, versus being... Uh, more tunnel visioned or rather focused uh, on your art. Yeah. Uh, could you say that's true? Yeah, I would because um, recently I kind of have this like TP friend and he kind of discussed to me about how um, kind of uses analogy about bubbles. He says I like, I'm very bubbly in the way I talk and I'll create all these different little bubbles. What he likes to do is to make this big bubble and make bubbles within itself. And I kind of find that like interesting because I think I'm supposed to have, or at least my guess is like, when does extrovert intuition where I just like create different ideas and kind of bounce off yeah. of that. For him, yeah. he likes to just internalize and focus on all the things within it. So yeah. Yeah, there, there's, there does tend to be sort of an, uh, an N-I, N-E uh, cross-section there. Uh, which I, I kind of see, at least with your artist, I'm not, I'm not going to say your entire uh, personality, but you do seem to have a more uh, exploratory artistic bent versus being tunnel visioned. Yeah. I want to ask a time frame question, though, to see how you answer, because it sounds like you guys are determined INFP, is my guess. But um, my question is how do you think you're going to feel about your life three years from now? Hmm, three years from now? Let's see. She'd be pretty happy, actually. She's not an ISFP. ISFPs are unable to answer that question. No. Compton? Uh, 
cat is this is really the cat's fault. They should be yelling at the cat, not Compton, because the cat is inciting Compton to violence. The cat will <laughs> climb up on something, and then when Compton walks by, she'll smack him in the face. Smack her in the face with her paw. I don't know why. Compton turns around, jumps up, and tries to get her, and then and then she goes pa 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 with her paws. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. Okay, so I think INFP as well. Uh, I, that was my initial. That's where I was leaning before I went to take that phone call, and it seems to be borne out by what you guys were saying. Is that where you guys got to, or what? I, I actually didn't let uh, Ubi ask any questions. I was I was kind of uh, rambling a bit with her, so I don't know. Maybe yeah. good. I INFP is definitely in my like top three, but I was still kind of toiling over them a little bit. I was um, Ray or Kickass. Do you have like a bunch of different hobbies, or do you pick up hobbies often and then kind of like get tired of them and pick up another one, or like do you like to try a lot of different things? Yeah, <laughs> actually. Like, if you take a look at my room, it's kind of, like, all over the place with different things. I have, um, I have a mandolin right here just sitting on my pillow. I have <laughs> a bunch of these markers laid out with a giant sketchbook that isn't filled yet. I have a guitar sitting on the ground. I have a piano across me with, like, an unfinished painting with a canvas and books on top of the canvas. So Do, you kind of all over the place. Do you record music? Hmm? Or or just play it? Not yet. I'm not good enough at it yet. I want to get a little bit better. I mean, I did. I used to record some songs on my phone, but then my phone broke, and it was like an old flip phone because I never really wanted to update to a smartphone. Now I have it for my mom. Do you have a computer? But I have a laptop. It's not really that great. I'm waiting to save up to get a better one and then get a mic. Well, it might have a decent oh, yeah. internal mic. You never know. I had an old laptop, an old Toshiba, that actually had a pretty good internal mic on it. But this one has shitty internal mic. It depends on your laptop. They're not necessarily better mm -hmm. laptops don't necessarily have better mics. Well, I meant to get a better laptop for, like, to run programs better and, like, faster. And then get a good mic to hook it up. Like, not good, like, expensive mic, but something, like, mid-range, you know, low investment. I just use this right now, and it is, it was $100 at Radio Shack, it's a USB mic, it's for podcasting, but it's, it works well enough for music too, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's not, I'm not going to win any engineering awards, but <laughs> <laughs> it does the job. Uh, I have another question. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. When you play, when you're learning an instrument or you're playing music, have you been like reading books and approaching it systematically, or do you really like just playing around on it? I just, like, I just pick it up and I just mess around with it. <laughs> Any instrument okay. I see, whenever I'm at a friend's house or my cousin's, I'll just like, can I, can I touch, can I see your violin for a moment there? <laughs> do you sing when you just, play those instruments? Do you sing along? I'm kind of shy when it comes to singing. Yeah, I sing alone. Usually, in my car rides to work, especially right. if I, I get like. I you know. asked if you sing along with the with the instrument oh. while you're strumming it. No. 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 Eric wants to know what your relationship with asbestos is. No, it's not <laughs> not aesthetics. Aesthetics. Oh, aesthetics. Okay. Well, asbestos, I I very much don't like it. I don't have anything against it. It's just we don't get along. Asbestos. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, how about aesthetics? Like with how things look. Like, am I picky with it or? Like, what's your vision um, as to why? Do you have a clear understanding of how you'd like it to be? Okay. Okay. This is this is what I'm playing, and. I know what I want it to sound like. It doesn't quite sound like that. Or do you have a notion instead of like, well, it could I could do anything with it. I mean, explain your under, explain how it is that you come to to feel as though you you're doing it well or doing it poorly. Mm. I usually have like an ideal kind of idea, but I've kind of learned to just not try to get to that level because it's sort of out there, if that makes sense. I have like a really high standard, 
So when I do stuff, I kind of just try to judge it on how I've done before and just try to get better. If I make mistakes, I usually improvise a lot. I have, like, certain, like, looks and things and feelings of how, like, stuff I like a certain aesthetic, but I can't really, like, afford it or it takes too much effort. Mm. I don't know. I have, like, different tastes, too. It's not usually, like, one certain look. It's, it kind of changes the mood. Well, do you listen to a lot of music, or do you mostly yeah. play more play music? Um... I listen to it more than I play. Usually it's like all over the place too. Interesting. Do you do you feel like you spend a lot of time thinking about what you value or like thinking about what's important uh, in the world or important to yeah, do you, th do you spend a lot of time thinking about what you value? Um, I think so. I don't usually say it in that way to myself. Yeah, I got to hear it. It's usually I ask myself, am I going to be content or happy doing this? Usually, like, before I had a decision, like, if I wanted to do something more for money or for more financial gain and business-like stuff, or something that's more people related. So I'm like, for a while I could kind of fake, I don't want to say fake, I can kind of make myself do responsible things for a while, but I start to get wear down on it. And I kind of start to feel, like I don't exhausted. know. Yeah, yeah that's exactly I'm going, it. I'm going with INFP, guys. That's, I kind of have the same conclusion here. I think so too. I think she's pretty cut and dry, INFP. Uh, you seem like as though you do you, you have a fairly peaceful emotional life like is mm, a little turbulent little can't really do much about it it's do not you, really me I'm pretty okay with myself do you feel as though are you subject to paranoia like thinking people are out to get you or something no if they're gonna get me I can't do much about it if I can I'll try fight it off but eh. do, you, do you sometimes wonder like come up with 10 different reasons why somebody said something to you possibly mm, no I don't think so okay interesting because I think this is a trait that some INFPs display and some traits some of them don't and I, I'm not sure what would cause it but um, I think some INFPs are prone to to directing their NE towards subtext too much so they go like, well, but why did he say it that way? Maybe he meant this. And then they start getting fussy yeah. at people about it. Oh, oh, I, think I, I, think I, I think I think I think I mean I used to do that and then I learned to just tell myself this is a waste of time and stressing me out. Just don't. I used to do that back then when I was younger. Okay. I don't do it anymore. Same thing with um like taking things personally. I used to get really upset and butthurt about a lot of things before that wouldn't even be directed to me and I just learned to just not to be more objective it's just a lot better hmm. so this is something you had to consciously work on or what yeah well I had to tell me I had to try to understand why I took something wrong and then realize from the person's perspective that they they didn't even like mean it in that way they didn't mean it to be a personal attack or Emotionally, they just meant it as objectively. It was just the way, it was just their language, basically, what you're saying? Um, it was the way they construct their language? It, it seems more that she's rather, uh, I wouldn't say accommodating, but more so just, like she said before, she sees where people come from and not assuming what they're thinking and just saying, oh, okay, well, they say it this way. It doesn't mean they're being mean. It just means that that's how they, you know... Construct their it. language. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, that is what he said. Sorry about that. I, I so just, I, I, sorry, I just have a habit of referring to you as fuckface. Uh, you know, it's not... <laughs> I don't think it's personal. Okay, I talk to my friends. Okay, well, let's draw this video here to a close. Thank you very much for speaking with us, Kit Kats. It's been a pleasure talking with you. 
an INFP, you are, of course, my supervisor in the Socionics uh, framework. So uh, in, you, your job is to tell me when I'm being mean, I think, basically, what that means. <laughs> That's the INFP's huh? job to the ENTP. Not your job to me, just in general, the INFP and the ENTP. All right, thanks for watching. Have a good evening.